if you're hesitant about treatments or surgeries or procedures, if you are in heart failure, I would definitely say trust your doctors and trust your instincts. You know your body, they know what's going on. You have an opportunity to get fixed. Do it, don't hesitate. So be open to the possibilities of helping yourself and trusting your doctors. What I would tell a patient who was living with heart failure, who was hesitant about treatments, therapy, surgeries, or procedures, would be to be open and honest with your doctor. Uh, a lot of these medications and procedures are scary, and I think you need to ask your physician about what would life look like afterwards. And not all procedures and therapies are right for each person. So you have to listen to what the risks are, what the benefits are, and weigh the risk benefits um, for yourself, and then make the decision that's right for you. I would say that um, if someone was living with heart failure and they were hesitant um, to get any treatments, I would tell them that it is a long, long road, but the road is totally worth it. Um, being able to breathe again after not being able to breathe for so long and to walk a couple miles with stride, it's totally worth it. And I'm not negating that the road is um, tumultuous because it is. Um, the last three years for me have been truly the hardest years of my life, but I wouldn't be here, you know, telling my story and, you know, advocating for heart health and, you know, just living my life and contributing to society if I didn't go through with all of these surgeries. I would tell them that it's a gift given to our generation that you should take advantage of. The generation before us has gifted their life, their time in clinical studies so that we now have medicines and devices and new procedures that allow patients to have heart transplants. So it's a gift to this generation that our grandparents did not have for their generation. There's all these new findings happening all the time. The research is happening. And we just need to be vocal enough with our doctors to say, hey, this is actually making me feel better. And I, I do feel a difference between A and B. And maybe it started when you put me on this medication. Either way, that helps them document what, what can help them help other people. My hopes for the future of heart failure treatments, uh, therapies, devices, um, is to continue to personalize medicine for each person. Um, I am specifically very optimistic about the progress that's been made in durable mechanical supports, specifically the LVAD. Uh, the newest iteration of the LVAD is really um, a marvel in terms of technology and people are living longer and longer with them. And so as we continue to try and find advanced therapies for people with end stage heart failure, I'm hopeful that we can continue to progress in this and, and allow people to live not only longer, but live lives that they want to live. Uh, my hopes for future heart failure treatments and therapies would be definitely smaller external devices, um, such as the LVAD. Um, when I had it, it was about eight pounds uh, to carry on my side. So I would hope that, you know, in next generations to come for that device, it would be smaller and easier to carry or not carry it at all and have it all be internal. Um, I would also hope that one day you wouldn't need another medicine to counteract the medicine that you're on. So like, for example, prednisone, you wouldn't need something else to help with the side effect of that medicine, if that makes sense. With heart failure as the number one killer of people in the United States and across the world, it needs to be a central focus prevention so that we know the signs we know the lifestyle changes that young adults even 30 40 and early 50s need to be undergoing so that when they hit that brick wall someday they have in their body by taking care of it what needs to be in their organs so that they can overcome and survive an unexpected heart failure or heart failure issue